What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Appreciate you guys watching. We are very excited to do this video today because we got a new boat. And what's not exciting about getting a new boat other than the new boat payment? Um, but uh, anyways, you know, first of all, I wanna thank everybody who has subscribed to us and who watches our channel, our customers out there that have helped us build our business because you guys have helped make this happen and this boat, honestly, is not just for me or Jake or Caleb or uh, my wife or, or daughter. This is for all of us. This is this is to make the fishing trips a little bit better for you guys. Um, it's going to give us some opportunities to get out a little bit and do some different things like kingfish, hogfish, more nearshore stuff that I'm really excited about doing. And we're going to continue doing the inshore snook reds, trout, grouper, tarpon, those kind of things. So let me uh, let me introduce you guys to the boat. This is a 25. Seahawk. They're built in North Carolina and I actually purchased it in St. Pete through a dealer there, uh, Northeast Marine. So if you guys are interested, check that out. But a little bit, like I said, a little bit about the boat. It's 25 foot from the tip of the bow to the back of the transom. And then we have a two foot Armstrong bracket. If you guys aren't familiar with that, the Armstrong bracket is almost like a a dive platform on the back this boat's a flat back and then it's got the platform that's two foot wide and then it's got the motor on the back which adds another almost three feet so overall this boat is almost 30 foot long and it has a nine foot eight beam which means it is super wide uh, it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that you might see on on some of the new boats because we chose that's that's not our style we chose not to have that it doesn't have you know a bunch of leather seats and stuff like that misters um, those things are great but for what we do this is more of a commercial style boat and uh and i think it's gonna be perfect for what we do what do you think jake you excited about it i know jake's so excited, excited about it jake we've we've had it for three days now and every time i get on it jake's screaming at me wash your feet do this do that don't do that get the brush there's a spot of blood over here uh, i hate to tell you jake this boat's gonna get real bloody before it's over but uh, we're gonna do our best to take care of it and hopefully get as many of you guys out on it as we possibly can. So we're gonna do a quick walk around to the outside so you can get a look at it and then we'll jump inside and we'll talk about the inside. All right, so that's the outside. Welcome to the inside of the boat. I mean, it's pretty simple. Like I said, guys, this is a strip down. I, uh, I even opted not to get it with any electronics or trolling motor or battery chargers or anything like that because I was gonna do, I'm gonna do all that myself. Uh, as far as the trolling motor, we're gonna use the shore up trolling motor mount, which I honestly, personally would not own a boat again. The first one I ever had was on my last boat, which you guys know the Parker. Um, that thing was a game changer when we put it on the boat. That bracket will save your trolling motor and I will not have another trolling motor on a boat without having the shore up bracket. So we're putting the shore up bracket on it. Uh, this boat sits really high out of the water. So we're putting a 84 inch shaft, 36 volt, 112 pound Minn Kota Tarova. Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep this thing as simple as we can. I'm kind of old school. Uh, we could use a little bit of weight in the front of this, so we're going to go ahead and put a regular three 12 volt battery system. It's a 36 volt system, but we'll have three 12 volt batteries. Um, not knocking lithium batteries. I know they save weight. They they hold charges forever. Uh, it's just like I said, you know, me and me and Jake and Caleb have talked about it, and we're kind of uh, uh, under the belief that if it's not broke, don't fix it. And basically on all my boats, I have three trolling motor batteries, two cranking batteries and accessory batteries. So, and this boat's plenty big enough to hold that. So starting at the front, huge front. Uh, this isn't actually the casting deck. This is the front of the bow. It's got kind of a, kind of a rounded off nose. And I've actually been wondering because this is a real classic design hull. If anybody knows why this front of the bow is actually sloped kind of with a hump in the middle, I'm curious because I've been looking at a lot of the older boats and the and the new boats that have a classic design and they've all got that hump in the middle so all i can figure is maybe it's for runoff or drainage or something like that and this didn't come with the boat this front casting deck i opted for this front casting deck for storage 
uh, the whole thing, this, this hatch opens up, the whole thing is storage. And I, you know, the gunnels are kind of high on this boat, so I wanted to give my customers, you know, a little bit of an elevated platform to be able to stand up and have a casting deck. Uh, console, we haven't done a lot. Like I said, we got the boat three days ago. We haven't done a lot to it. I did go with the Simrad gauges and I upgraded the jack plate paddle just because I didn't want a button. I actually wanted the flipper paddle. That's working really good. It's got an insulated cooler seat in the front. Let's see what else we can talk about here, Jake. Um, we're gonna talk about the motor when we get back to the back. But this was kind of interesting to me is it is a Tahatsu and I know I, I've, I've heard a ton of good and bad and you know but we'll talk about the motor when we get it back but it came with Honda ignition Honda controls there's our trim tabs and our accessory switches and like I said guys if you notice this is completely stripped down as simple as it gets this boat is made for fishing made for hauling a bunch of people with a bunch of equipment and keeping them comfortable there's a big gap right here we're gonna go with the Simrad Go 12 is what we've decided on because we already have the Simrad gauges. I've borrowed a couple boats in the last few weeks that have had the Simrad Go 12s. I've been very, very, very impressed with them. Very happy using them. Haven't had any issues. We had a Garmin on our old boat and Garmin makes great electronics, but the reason we're not going back with Garmin is because Garmin, Garmin has the best, to me, has the best GPS system out there. They're lacking a little bit on their side imaging and and their fish finding what am i trying to say jake sonar sonar i think I okay know. we'll go with sonar but i think they're lacking they're still a little behind there in that area now as far as the best side imaging and sonar i personally believe that's hummingbird but i feel like hummingbird is lacking a little bit in the gps department uh after using the simrad i think simrad is a perfect mix of both of those and it's going to work really well it's been working really well and the boats we've been using totally happy with it so let's move on this is all storage this is a battery compartment don't look in there that's that's like don't look in there we've been running the boat three days you don't want to look in there rocket launcher across the back of the uh of the leaning post real simple live well i will tell you uh on this live well this live well is 45 gallons our live well on our Parker was 35 gallons. On the Parker, it would basically hold enough bait to where we could run one and a half trips. I usually have to borrow bait if I had a double. Not borrow bait, steal bait, get bait. Steal bait, not steal bait from other captains. Uh, to get through our double. Now the other day, we ran a double off this boat. We blacked this live well out. We did not lose a single piece of bait. And after the double, we threw back enough bait that we could have ran a third trip if we had had one. And if the uh, if the day daylight allowed, so huge back fishing area. The back's wide open. Um, this is something really cool. I liked. We had an option of leaving the transom open. Like I said, the boat is a flat back. We had the option of leaving the transom open or enclosing the transom and putting these doors in. We chose to enclose the transom just basically for aesthetics. I didn't want to be looking back there and seeing gas lines and water fuel water separators power pole pump stuff like that so you open these doors it gives you access to all your all your lines all your uh all your working stuff all your pumps and it keeps it nice and clean the other thing in closing this transom allowed us to do was on top of the live well it allowed us to put in a pitch well we haven't personally used the pitch well for anything it's not plumbed it is plumbable everything's right there underneath it they're super simple to plumb but it does have a drain so what we're kind of thinking is we're going to use this for like shrimp crabs during tarpon season stuff like that we may insulate it wind up using it as a fish box to put our catch in i'm not sure what we're going to do with this yet but it's pretty cool space let's see let's step out onto the armstrong bracket like we talked about in the beginning on the back of the boat attached before the motor we have a motor bracket and we have an armstrong bracket that's this little two foot platform here and a hundred percent truth i opted for this because i thought it looked really cool and i thought you know if i can get the motor back a little bit further the boat's going to handle like a bigger boat and it really does but i have found a ton of uses for this i mean i spend as long as jake's on top of his game and he's keeping up with bait and hooks and taking fish off 
I found that this is a great place for me to stand and I'm out of the way. Uh, I can uh, I can throw the cast net from back here. If we have to land larger fish, it's, it's really easy from back here. And, um, you know, swimmers can get on and off easy. It's got a boarding ladder that comes up to the bracket and it does make the boat handle like a bigger boat. So let's go back to the back and we'll talk about what we've got on the back so far. All right, so the first thing we got is we have Bennett trim tabs. Cannot have a boat anymore without trim tabs. They're priceless. We've already gone ahead and we installed, Jake and I installed two eight foot power poles. We use the Pro Series 2. They're eight footers. The reason we do that is we could have got 10 footers. We could have used the blades personally. And this is all from personal experience, guys. I'm not speaking like a professional, like I know everything about any of this. This is just the honest truth of what I've seen so far. We have had better luck with the with the Pro Series, the eight footers. I don't think they flex as much. And this is a big boat. It catches a lot of wind. So my concern was putting the 10 foot blades down and getting a lot of flex and spin with the wind and not being able to face into the wind. All right, so we got a four inch Atlas jack plate. And that's the little paddle you saw on the side of the steering column. Uh, jack plates, you really don't hear a lot about jack plates. Some of them are faster than others. I really haven't heard of any that are garbage that don't work. Uh, you got Bob's jack plates. You got, uh, what was our last one, Jake? On the Parker, you remember? Uh, it might have been a Bob's. Was it a Bob's? I think it was a Bob's. So pretty much, I mean, I know Bob's and Atlas are two of the biggest brands and I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. This is just the one that Northeast Marine puts on these boats. Excuse me. Call you back in a minute, Mom. Promise, when we're done. All right, so now we've been around the outside of the boat, taking you guys through a short tour of the inside of the boat. We've talked about what's on the back of the boat. And I know that everybody watching this video the whole time has been looking behind me in this video and let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room because i know there's gonna be a ton of comments uh probably a lot of bad comments but let's talk about the tahatsu 250 that's on the back of this boat all right the first thing i know about this tahatsu is when i started talking to people and i started looking around i did research but i wanted first-hand experience from people that i know i know a lot of captains and a lot of commercial fishermen in tampa bay that are running tahatsus this one in particular, the 250. They have had very good luck with it. It is considerably less expensive than the Yamahas that I've been running on my past boats. And I'm not knocking Yamaha. Uh, all, all things have their own little issues. Um, and I don't expect to have no issues with this. But I had issues with the Yamaha. They're a very expensive motor. They're a very good motor. Mercury's a good motor. Suzuki's a good motor. Uh, Honda's a good motor. I, like I said, this isn't anything personal. So let's get that out of the way because I know there's gonna be some comments. But I chose the 250 Tahatsu. Basically, first of all, because of the experiences, like I said, that, that I talked to the other commercial fishermen and charter captains in the Bay, and I got their personal firsthand experiences and they love them. 100% love them. Then I started looking and comparing Tahatsu to Honda 250s. They are the same motor, 110% the same motor. Uh, fuel economy, fuel usage, weight down to the ounce, they are the exact same motor. That's why you see the Honda controls and the Honda ignition up on the dash because they are 110% the same motor. This motor comes with a five year warranty it it's taken some i'm not gonna lie it's taken some getting used to so the first thing i noticed after running this motor for a couple days is it is very strong it's got plenty of power to push this boat we've had uh so far we've had the most i think we've had seven people and all the gear on it and the motor is very strong the second thing i noticed and i was actually i was actually warned about this and and told to not be concerned is this motor runs considerably warmer than the traditional four-stroke Yamahas and stuff like that. I think I think my Yamaha was running like 175. This motor is gonna run 210 to 220 when it's wide open, hot, uh, and and as far as what I'm getting out of the RPMs, when, when I went to Northeast Marine and I talked to Curtis over there, I said, you know, what RPM should I be running this boat at when I'm cruising? He's like, you know, you can, you can expect to run five to 5,500 
I, the most I really ever ran my Yamaha at was around 5,500. He said, but when you get on it, he said, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mind 6,000, 6,100. And it has absolutely done it. I know I've only had this for three days, so I'm gonna keep you updated on this because you guys, I guarantee you, a lot of you out there know a whole lot more about this motor than I do. But basically, like I said, from the intel that I've gotten around the bay from fishermen, don't knock it till you try it. And, uh, and we decided to try it. So three days in, I'm happy with the Tahatsu. I'm extremely happy with the entire rig. You know, it's, it's taken me some getting used to because of the, just the size of the boat that I'm used to compared to the size of this one. For a couple days, I didn't even want to run inshore and fish Snook and Reds. And, and uh, me and Jake were nervous every time we got less than three foot of water. But the specs on the boat say that the boat will draft 11 inches. And I can tell you from having seven people on it and all our gear, it will 100% draft 11 inches. And I've got to say, how shallow do you think we've ran it, Jake? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to throw some ridiculous number out there like, mm -hmm. oh, the grass was sticking up and, you know, but I would say realistically, conservatively, we've run this boat in 10 inches. I, I would definitely say 10, yeah. I mean, it, it scared us because we're just waiting the whole time to bump and, and know, okay, that's, that's it. That's as shallow as we can run. But the fact of the matter is you don't know how shallow you can get in any boat you run firsthand until you get it stuck. And I'm not looking forward to the day, but I guarantee you the day's coming. And I, I hope Jake's got his pushing boots on because he's gonna have to get out and get us off of it. So anyways, that's it. This is the new boat, the Seahawk 25. We're gonna keep you guys. Uh, we're gonna keep you guys up to speed. I am gonna go over the shore up trolling motor mount and the Minn Kota trolling motor installation. Me and Jake are gonna do that ourselves. A lot of these things, guys, are, are really easy to do yourself. Um, so don't think you know because you bought it, you're gonna have to shell out another two thousand dollars to have it mounted or whatever it costs. Because you know you can you can do these things yourself. So I'm excited, Jake. I'm excited. Uh, dude, he. That y'all heard that? That was diff that was a different. I'm excited than you normally hear from Jake behind the camera. But we uh, we're gonna put this boat to good use. We're gonna catch a lot of fish off of it. We already have caught a lot of fish off of it in the last three days, so it does work. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, probably in the next video, you're gonna you're gonna see Easton back. He's he's over around the corner over there, laid up in his house right now. But uh, we wanted to get this out to you, show you guys the new boat, tell you guys how very much we appreciate everybody watching uh everybody subscribing subscribing i know it, it you know i'm not i'm not ever going to ask you guys to subscribe if you wanted to su subscribe i can't say that many times that fast subscribe subscribes it kind of runs into but if you want to subscribe go ahead and do it because it does help us and uh we really appreciate everybody for everything they've done for us and uh we're ready to get out there and catch fish so until next time god bless everybody and We'll see you guys on the water in the Seahawk 25.